People often ask me and us what leadership is and whether you can learn it. And that's a really interesting question because we may have a definition of leadership, we may be able to deconstruct it into 15 categories, but fundamentally leadership is something you experience and something others experience with you and you experience in yourself. Leadership is a tough call. It requires enormous authenticity. One of the more important viewpoints about leaders is that they create leaders themselves. If you're creating leaders, then you're probably a leader. If you're a good leader, you're quite candid. You're honest, you're authentic, you give direct feedback, and you take direct feedback. The other thing to know is if you step up to being a leader, you're stepping into an arena where you're open to enormous criticism. So really great leaders probably have a decent confidence, they probably have a powerful sense of meaning, but they also have a very, very awake sense of their own frailties and dysfunctions. And they live with those because they don't stop their mission because of those. They just use those as steps to improve themselves. So good leaders are continually improving themselves, trying to grow, forced to being humble, falling into many traps, but somehow picking themselves up and continuing on the path. One of the things that crosses my mind quite often in meetings is like, I've seen this before. To me, it's like Groundhog Day management. Have you seen that film where everything happens, Groundhog Day, everything happens again and again and again. It's the same story. So I often think, but we've had this meeting before. We had it last month. We had it last week with the same issues, the same talks, the same outcomes that we promised each other. So I've been reflecting on that a bit. And I, what I'm realizing is that we do two things. One is, I think we love solving problems or describing problems. And so we'll take a problem and take it to pieces until we've got this wonderfully articulated expression of the nature and sources of this problem or challenge. Then we'll step back with a sort of rush of pleasure and say, ah, oh, that was a great job. I've really sorted that problem out. Of course, you've sorted nothing out. All you've done is describe it. The hard thing, which is where it gets very difficult because you've got to work in uncertainty and you've got to have courage, is trying to do something about it. The moment that idea starts hitting the real world is a moment that imperfection happens, that you're touching the concrete and things go wrong and your wonderful idea starts having all the cracks showing. So really, Groundhog Day management is when we stick in that safe loop of description and we don't ever get to putting things in place. So to avoid that, we need very strong accountabilities and you need a lot of courage and you need to be able to experiment with doing things and knowing that what you're going to do is sometimes going to fail. And that's the experimental mindset. You know that it's going to fail. But what do experimenters do? Well, great experimenters are also great learners. So they gather the data. They are looking restlessly for the disconfirming data, the things that are going to make their idea seem invalid as well as valid. They're forcing, disciplining their mind to look for those things. And every time they see them, they say, yes, I've got some something that I can learn from that's going to take me further. Those people who are scared of learning or want to show that they're capable will look for confirming evidence, things that will justify and reinforce their prior, prior conception of what's right or wrong. And in a sense, they won't really learn because they'll skew the world and the information that comes to them in such a way that they can stay in the way they think. So great leaders, great managers, great executives, great people are above all great learners. Anything you do in life is an experiment in many respects, raising children, starting a company. You don't know what the outcome is going to be. So you might as well become a really good learner so that when you go into the new, you know you're going to be able to learn your way out of that into a better understanding. That capacity to learn allows us to launch new businesses, to take on crazy big ventures. I'd love to save the oceans, wouldn't you? Well, why don't we have a go? There's nobody behind us to do it. It's just us. It's our turn. We might as well have a try. And so we're all who we are. We're nothing special, but let's have a go. And if you know that you can learn, the experiments and the, the times you fall simply become a way to develop a capability and a skill. One of the great things about learning and education in business schools is that it's largely about skills, subtle skills, business acumen, working with teams, engaging intellect, engaging imagination and innovation. And those skills, like any other skill, need to practice. You need to try it, see what the consequences are, try it again, try it again. And over the period of time where you repeat these things, that skill grows. Learning something from a book one time gives you no skills at all. If you're willing to engage in skill building, 
for the highest level skills you can, then you've got to engage with the real world. You've got to try. And that's what we do at Henley. We're very proactive. We love deep action learning. And we love seeing people try and try again because generally they succeed and they come out robust, educated, strong, and confident.